Today we're going to go through high flow devices such as the aerosol mask, the trach collar, and the face tent and oxy hood. The aerosol face mask looks just like the mask that was used for the Venturi mask, and it is. The only difference is we do not have the large bore tubing with the Venturi ports. This would go on just like the regular mask, like that, or if you're putting it on your patient, right there. Just like that. Remember, do not put a mask on without flow going through the system because you don't want rebreathing of carbon dioxide. The face tent will come in a package and look something like this. You put it on the patient by opening it up, putting it there, and putting the strap on. So with this one, you put it on like that, and then the face, the strap would go around the head. The trach collar goes exactly where you think it would. Tracheostomy is an airway in the, uh, the neck. So we would put it on the patient. That one's a little harder to see, but you can unsnap it here. You do not have to go around the head. Snap it back. You'd feed the strap behind the neck and then re-snap it. This would go right here. Okay, the oxy hood is a device that is used for babies. You want, if you, according to your sheet, if you look at it, the oxygen sheet, you want at least seven liters per minute going through, not the 40 to 45 liters as we have mentioned for adults. You want at least seven liters per minute going through. It will attach here. It has a diffuser so that the air is not hitting the baby. This would have to be heated. Babies cannot regulate their temperature as well, so this would have to be a heated aerosol. And it would go like this. Typically you can have an FiO2 detector there. That would determine the actual FiO2. So minimum liter flow is seven liters per minute. You do not want a high liter flow, mainly because you'd cool the baby. The other equipment that you need, of course, a flow meter. You also need two sections of large bore corrugated tubing. This is about six feet long. And I do have two sections, they either come prepackaged or on a roll, and you'll have to cut it off. You will need a drainage bag. This is because of condensation occurring, you want it to drain out. And also, you want water. This is a large volume nebulizer. It is used for humidification. This type will come with a cap on it. You twist and it'll pop the cap off. You unscrew that. This will come in a separate package. They're packaged together, but it's separate package inside the same package. You then open this. Do not touch the hose. That would cause contamination, and now you can possibly deliver contaminants to your patient. You take this, put it in, and just screw it on. If you look, the arrow, that is what determines your FiO2. I would be delivering 40%. This is where the magic box comes in. If you notice, there's no liters per minute. 35, 30, 28. Okay, so I'm going to put it on 28. So now this is ready to go. Now, how do I set this up? Well, this does not fit. So you must take the Christmas tree off of the flow meter. Typically, this is going to be connected to the wall, but just for the purposes of demonstration. Good catch. There. And it goes just like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this to the wall where it would have been already. Then I'm going to take my first section of corrugated tubing. Right here. Connect it. It takes a little working, 
That is now connected. I take my drainage bag, connect it. This is for draining the water out. So when the water gets in here, when you go around and assess your patients, you'll need to take this and drain it into a glove, into a garbage can, something. Then you take your second section of corrugated tubing. If at any time any of this hits the floor in the hospital, you will have to replace it. For lab competency, if it hits the floor, you will have to verbalize that, oh, this hit the floor, I will have to go replace it. There we go. Now, I did let this hit the floor. That is fine because it's not an open piece. It is now closed, and every bacteria cannot get on the inside. Then I would connect whatever device I wanted, face tint, trait color, or aerosol face mask. Let's go with trait color. Connect it there. I have my FiO2 set at 28 from the prior video. We know that is a 1 to 10 ratio, total flow of 11 to get close to 40 to 45. I want to set my flow meter at 44 liters per minute, or 4 liters per minute which will give me 44 liters per minute coming out. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to take this off. And in lab you will need to be able to see, you should be able to see the liters per minute. If you can hear this, it's not very loud. Many times in the hospital, you'll find patients with this running at 10 liters per minute because a lot of therapists just put all of these on 10 liters per minute because, oh, they need the flow. They don't need this much flow. When you're in lab, what I want you to do is to listen to how loud that is. It is very loud. Also listen to the jet coming out of here. I'm not sure if anybody would like to listen to that 24 hours a day. At 4 liters per minute, you can guarantee 44 liters per minute coming out of this. That is the high flow system with cool aerosol. This is for the oxy hood, the cool aerosol mask, the face tint, or the trait color. Now I did say that you would have to add heat for the oxy hood. There are some places that still use them. They make a heated donut. It's a ring that goes on this and you plug it up to the wall. This is metal. And what that will do is it will actually add some heat. There are many other devices that are in use now. This is an older style. I really have not seen one in many, many years, but just to let you know, it is out there. And that is the cool aerosol setup for a high flow system.